All right, for our last example in Chapter 26, uh, we're going to be doing what's called a chi-square test of independence. So a question might be, does your eye color influence whether you are right-handed or left-handed? You're probably thinking, uh, no, Mr. Curtis, that's silly. Um, wouldn't influence, like being blue-eyed doesn't make you be right-handed. Um, but that's what we're going we're to show statistically. So um, again, this table you might think about, this is our observed table observed. This is what we actually saw. So I saw six brown-eyed left-handed people. Uh, in this case, I've actually already given you a row and column of the totals. So we're going to be checking out today are the percentages the same for all groups. Uh, oh, my apologies. Pull that way far out. So really, we're doing the exact same test as a chi-score test of homogeneity. We're checking to make sure if the groups have all the same percentages. It is going to be exactly the same. So step one, we're going to write hypotheses. Now these we are going to write differently, but they'll still be in English. So no hypothesis. Handedness and eye color are independent. Remember, independent meaning one thing does not affect the other. Um, this is actually our null. This is status quo. Nothing is going on if your eye color and handedness, that's a cool word, right? Handedness, um, if they don't affect each other, that means nothing's going on. Alternatively, we might say something like handedness and eye color are not independent. Notice those are opposites. Uh, that's actually the same. I could say it this way. It's the same as saying there is an association between handedness and eye color. Or another word would be relationship. So status quo, null. No hypothesis. Nothing's going on. The two do not affect each other. They're independent. What we're trying to prove is that they do have a relationship. This is the most common set of hypotheses where my students get it backwards. So please watch out. Independent needs to be the null. Be really careful. OK, conditions. Uh, last time I forgot to remind you, categorical, and this is just a mental condition. But we can't do chi-square unless it's categorical. In this case, I do have categorical. You're either right-handed or left-handed. Those are categories. Your eye color, it's brown, blue, green, or other categories. Uh, so condition one, random. Um, we actually have no information. I didn't really give you a story problem. So uh, we could assume so, or we might write, if not random, the results are questionable. Like We really can't verify this one. Expected counts. We would actually fill out a chart to look at all of our expected counts. So I'm going to do a couple to remind you about how it worked. We had that cute little formula where we do our row total times our column total uh, and divide by the grand total or the corner. So again, I'm just going to do a couple to kind of remind you how it goes. If I want to get the expected count for this cell, I would take the row total, that's 42. I would times by the column total, that's 19 straight down. And I would divide by that corner, and I get 7. Okay, I'll just show you a couple more. Just again, some reminders. Uh, maybe I want to do this one right here. That would be 33 times 95 divided by 114. And no, I don't have a shortcut for this. By the way, I get 27.5. The score is going to have 0.5 of a person. Like, I know, think of these as averages. Like, it's okay. Keep decimals around. Um, ooh, I'll do this in green because that would be kind of funny to me. Row total times column total divided by grand total. I get 3.83 if I round that. So you should pause the video now and do all the expected. It's good practice. Make sure you get this formula. Like in your brain. Um, I did notice that when I did this one, I got an expected of 2.67. That means these two cells, 
like, no, the expected count is not greater than 5. We don't have that condition met. Um, there's actually, I know you're like, but Ms. Kurt is at school and you tell us to do the problem anyway. Um, uh, we really shouldn't. Like, our results are going to be meaningless. So, sneaky way around it. It's, it's kind of cool. Sneaky way. Um, I'm actually going to look back at my original data. Let's see if I can tuck this out of the way so we can look at it. And I noticed that it was the green and the others that were causing me problems. That's because we have very few left-handed green-eyed people and very few left-handed other-eyed people. Um, so sneaky thing is I'm actually going to combine these. I'm going to combine these categories together and make myself a new table. So other now also has the green inside it. So this is my observed table. Again, I've just uh, fancied it up a little where I've combined two of those rows uh, in hopes that my expected conditions will be met. So for your information, um, some students really like to do this where they draw their tables and um, they actually divide the boxes in half and record the expected numbers underneath. So you saw in the last one that the brown-eyed lefties had an expected of 7 and the right-handed blue-eyed people had an expected of 27.5. So I could fill those in. The only ones I'd have to recalculate is this other group. Um, so you might want to like verify that you get the same numbers that I do um, for the expected. So I'm just going to fill in all the rest. So that's one way to organize your data. So I've got this like expected is on the bottom and observed is on the top. Just kind of a, a handy way to keep all your data really close and, and together. So I can now verify that my expected counts are all bigger than 5. Like, yay, I made it. So we're doing what's called a chi-square test of independence. Pretty cool. All right, so recap. We've done our hypotheses. Handedness and eye color are independent versus handed and eye color are not independent. We've verified our conditions. All the expected counts are greater than 5. I'm not sure about the random sample, but we'll proceed. So I'm ready to move on to the mechanics. So I'll just remind you, uh, we do have to show our work for chi-square. I might do something like, oh, 6 minus 7 squared over 7 plus, and then I show another one, 36 minus 35 squared over 35 plus, and then I might do some dot, dot, dot. And finally, I'd do the 33 minus 32.5 squared over 32.5. All right, so I've shown my work. I'm not actually going to bother plugging those on the calculator. I could, but I've shown my work. I'm going to get the final chi-square, the p-value, and the degrees of freedom from my calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do this one more time. All right, so in my calculator, uh, just as a reminder again, um, we're in matrix. I'm going to use C and D this time just to be different. Uh, oh, you'll notice I made a mistake already. Matrix, I need to go to edit. So I'm going to edit matrix C. And again, I get two by three mixed up. Uh, this does not look like the same format as what I want. So it looks like I need to switch this to a three by two so that my box matches the box that I see on the screen. I do all of the observed numbers in one of my matrices or tables. Um, Trying to type really carefully because I've made a mistake already today. All right, and then if I go back to matrix and edit uh, in matrix D, again, this was a 2 by 3. Oh, man, I did it again. 3 by 2. All right, so now I'm going to put in the expected numbers, including any decimal values. That's okay. All 
All right, once those are all filled in, I can leave that. I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to test. And remember, this is a chi-square test. Like, it's really the same as what we did for homogeneity. Um, oh, cool. Mine already says C and D. Just a quick reminder, if it doesn't say that, you go to matrix, and you just select the name. So, like, C will show up. And I'll go ahead and push calculate. There is my chi-square of 0.71, my p-value of 0.70. It's funny that those are similar. And my degrees of freedom of 2. So I'm going to record all those things on my paper. So I had 0 0.71, 0 0.70, and degrees of freedom 2. Just a quick reminder, degrees of freedom comes from the number of rows minus 1, number of columns minus 1, Ms. Curtis, did you do those backwards? Um, really doesn't matter. You can multiply in any order. So that's 1 times 2, which is how we got the 2. And our last step is to write a conclusion. My p-value is 0.7 um, with an alpha of 0.05. That's very much bigger. So that means I would fail to reject the null hypothesis because my p-value is greater than alpha. That means we have no evidence of an association between handedness and eye color. In other words, there's no evidence that they're not independent. Like, that's kind of a tongue twister. There's no evidence that they're not independent. I did not prove that they are independent, because remember, we don't prove the null, but there's no evidence that they're not independent. All right, and that is our chi-square um, test of independence. So when we meet, we are going to spend some time talking about how to tell independence and homogeneity apart. The hypotheses are different. Other than that, they work exactly the same. So we'll spend some time focusing on how they are different.